Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Thank you for being here. Um, first of all, uh, this is obviously not the guy who's giving the talk. I did mutate it uh, because of a strange virus. Um, uh, actually, this guy should be here instead of me because uh, he's the father of the creature. Um, but due to, due to uh, a small problem with the consulate that uh, didn't grant the visa in time, uh, he couldn't be here. So I am here uh, talking. Um, so. Uh, first of all, keep in mind that uh, Alexei, who's a great guy and an amazing uh, developer and, and also a very smart guy, uh, should be here and, and not me. And all credits to this guy. So, um, who I am? I am, my name is Juan Pablo. Uh, I have been working in the IT industry for 18 years. I'm 36 years old. Um, I am a software engineer, and currently I work as a, a field cloud foundry engineer uh, at Autoros. Uh, I do love to dance tango and to play a blues guitar, so if anyone wants to invite me to jam, I'm happy to uh, do it. Uh, I work uh, at Altoros. Um, we offer a variety of software services. Uh, mostly related right now to Cloud Foundry. We are investing a lot in Cloud Foundry. Um, we provide very much benchmarking for different um, uh, companies. Uh, we do software development. Uh, we have a lot of uh, big and not so big customers, uh, which we don't care. Every, everyone is big for us. Uh, we have um, offices all around the world. And we are really, really happy of being a gold sponsor here at uh, CF Summit uh, this year. So uh, let's get to the uh, important topics. The big picture of this uh, talk is about um, Lattice and console. Have you? Uh, how many of you have you been in the talk uh, in the A2 room where uh, the guys talking about Lattice were? Awesome, nice. So you are familiar with uh, Lattice for those uh, who are not, I'm going to make a very brief introduction to, uh, to Lattice. And then console, which is the uh, main topic of this uh, talk. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, service uh, discovery issues and how to overcome them and how console uh, works uh, to overcome those problems. Um, and we also are going to see a very brief uh, example on registering a MySQL service with console and how uh, console reacts one, uh, when um, one of these uh, MySQL servers goes down. Um, first of all, Lattice. Lattice is a very sweet open source tool um, that allows you to run containers um, in a cluster. Uh, Lattice containers, he, it uses Docker images, uh, which is really cool. Um, uh, it, they can be long running or temporary tasks. Um, and they get dynamically uh, scaled and balanced uh, across the cluster. Um, Lattice has uh, much a lot of similarities with Cloud Foundry without being a full Cloud Foundry deployment, which, you know, it's big, it's heavy, it's costly. Lattice is very lightweight and it's extremely fun to use. It's, uh, it's really amazing. I, I just, I, I really love it. Um, four main features uh, for Lattice. Uh, you have a scheduling. Lattice uses Diego. Diego is still in development. This Diego is next generation of Cloud Foundry uh, scheduler. Uh, so everything that you have in Cloud Foundry uh, that goes with Diego, you have it in, Lass in Lattice. Um, what this scheduler does is basically to balance the location of resources across uh, a cluster of, um, uh, of servers that you have running in the uh, Lattice cluster, right? Um, the algorithm is a uh, distributed ocean model. Um, I encourage you to know a little bit more about it. It's, it's very cool to learn. Um, so uh, the, the most important feature here is that since it uses scheduling 
and also um, it uses Diego, uh, what it does is to provide a very good compatibility with Cloud Foundry. The same image that you're using in Lattice, you can then deploy to production using Cloud Foundry. But you can stage it, you can test it, you can develop it using just Lattice in one notebook without having to deploy it to, for example, AWS or uh, a server farm, right? Um, a second very, very cool feature is dynamic routing. The dynamic routing um, allows you to uh, start as many as um, containers as, as you want, uh, as you want um, and they will be automatically added to the load balancer as they become available, right? Uh, this, is very, uh, this is very good uh, because you don't have to manually configure it. Of course, you have the chance to configure that manually. You have the chance to do some custom routing and uh, provide, for example, a custom HTTP uh, traffic shaping for A-B test or Brooklyn uh, deployments. Um, Lattice is also self-healing, uh, another characteristic that shares with uh, some of the Cloud Foundry uh, topics, which uh, allows to compare a desired state of the system against the uh, current state of the system. Right? If Lattice found that the desired state is not equal at, as the current state, it will fix it automatically for you. <clears throat> it also provides a very cool status stream via Logregator that you can actually see all the uh, activity that the logs are providing for each one of the uh, containers running. Um, you just connect to, the, uh, to, to Lattice via the uh, CLI uh, tool and you can see all the activity that is happening. Uh, the CLI is very simple. Um, it's very e easy to use. You can um, target one of the uh, lattices running in your computer or uh, in, a, in a cloud deployment. Um, you can create uh, the application. It's very simple with the, with the chest uh, create. Uh, just like you, you can see there, for example, uh, we are creating a lattice app that is uh, on, the, on the Docker uh, repository and Cloud Foundry is let us have a very simple application, but uh, it, you just need that. You don't need any complicated uh, procedure or whatever. Um, you can see logs. This is how you can actually can start looking um, through the OLE logger gator uh, stream, the firehose. You can list the applications that you have. You can scale the applications that easy. Uh, you can see the status of each one, each single one of the containers that you're running, and uh, you can uh, visualize <coughs> the distribution of the workload between those containers. Uh, it's just a very simple um, uh, demonstration of the CLI. It's not even a demonstration, it's just <laughs> showing you guys. Um, so why to choose Lattice? Uh, it's extremely easy to use. It's extremely simple to set up. Um, it's fast. It's really fast. Um, it has a very small footprint. Uh, an idle um, deployment, an idle lattice deployment weights as much as 250 megabytes in memory. So you can use it in your laptop. Uh, try to use Bosch Lite in your laptop. Uh, then we can talk. Uh, it fits, it's a perfect fit for developers uh, that work standalone or a small team uh, for testing, for staging. Um, I do use it, I use it for, uh, I use it in my company and uh, as, um, uh, and for uh, personal projects. It's really good. Um, now, let's get to the, to the very import, important uh, part of the talk. Right now, uh, console, it's also another really cool product uh, that works, that is for discovering and configuring services in your infrastructure, right? Uh, it's very distributed, it's highly available, so uh, it will work in many situations. It's perfect for production, even though it didn't reach the uh, 1.0 version. Um, every uh, every node provides services 
uh, that are um, mapped with console, it runs a console agent. This agent is going to uh, health check the services that are running in the node and it's going to be responsible to check the health of the node itself and report it to the console servers. Um, the most important part uh, is that um, you can use this, you can use console uh, to discover services uh, with your applications, clients, whatever, and they don't have to know exactly uh, where the service is located, uh, which port to communicate, which IP, uh, console will take care of it, will return, hey, if you want to use MySQL, you need to connect to this IP, this port. The four main features of console are, um, or the tasks, maybe it's not features, it's tasks. Um, console is, service discovery is the main, uh, uh, is, is the purpose. Um, the console clients can provide services, uh, maybe an API, maybe MySQL, maybe Cassandra, maybe Redis, whatever. Uh, and other clients can connect to console to find out how to connect to those services. Um, the way that you can connect to console is uh, via a, a simple DNS query or an HTTP API, uh, which is really cool. Um, check it out. Also, uh, a very important um, characteristic of console is the uh, health checking for failure detection. Um, those agents that lives that are running in the servers that are uh, running our services um, can provide any number of health checks. Uh, you can report, for example, um, how much memory is left, how uh, if the processor is running high, um, whatever you want to report uh, with the scripts, you have the facility of doing that with simple scripts. Um, the health checks can be, for example, uh, associated also to HTTP queries. You can query a service via HTTP and if it returns uh, 200, then you're okay. Um, this operation, uh, this, um, this information can be used by any operator uh, to um, take action in case that uh, some catastrophic thing uh, is, is happening. Um, it also has a key, very flexible key value store. Um, it's a hierarchical uh, key value store. Um, you can do that, you can use it for uh, dynamic configurations, you can use it for uh, feature flagging, you can use it for um, leader election, uh, you have an HTTP API that you can use to query that key value uh, store. Uh, and for me, the most cool feature about console is that it's multi data center ready. Uh, you don't have to add any layer uh, uh, to uh, be able to query for different services in different data centers, more on that later. Um, so, many of you may be wondering, Lattice is using Diego. Diego has console, actually. It's just console for uh, discovering um, uh, the cells that he's working with. So, why don't we use the same console that Diego has? Uh, for me, this problem is simple, gets to the point of how much do you want to tamper inside of your uh, deployment, right? Uh, even if you're using Cloud Foundry, um, can be, it can be very risky to start um, tampering with uh, uh, the console inside of Diego. Uh, I can confirm that because I n never tried it, uh, but for me it has to be a separate, completely separate uh, um, layer. So uh, there is one proposal in the, um, in the Lattice uh, repository, in the Lattice uh, backtracker, that says that it's probably good to use a SkyDNS 
uh, to solve uh, the, service dis the external service discoveries uh, in Lattice. Uh, the second chance is to uh, speed up is to, to, just to start another console um, cluster, just like uh, we think that is, uh, is a better choice. And maybe there is a third uh, option that um, we didn't explore, or maybe another, uh, another one of you has an, uh, a better idea. But so far, uh, starting um, a third, uh, starting a separate uh, console cluster is, for us is, is better. Uh, let's talk about the problems, the, the hindering problems with service discovery. Um, so let's say that we have uh, one service running on multiple hosts, right? It's today it's very common to have three or four, for example, uh, MySQL databases running um, during master master replication, or maybe you have uh, a Redis cluster or Cassandra or whatever service uh, you might want to have, even your own uh, API uh, service, right? So if a client wants to connect to one of these services, how to provide the right IP and the right port uh, for this um, client? This is one of the uh, uh, one of the problems that console solves, right? It's, it's the problem that console solves, and it's re actually really hard uh, because you have to have in mind a lot of uh, um, constraints and and a lot of uh, different problems that you might encounter. The first of all, of course, is a node fault. What happens uh, when one of these um, hosts? One of these hosts has uh, problems and can answer uh, to request. Um, just for having this in mind, uh, every software and hardware piece will eventually fail at some time, will eventually be shut down at some time. This is Morphe's law. Uh, you can't avoid it. It's, it's impossible. So um, let's say that a node, uh, a whole node, not just a service, a whole node gets shut down uh, due to uh, power outage or whatever. Um, the service discovery tool will have to uh, detect that this node has been shut down and will have to route all the other requests for um, uh, a MySQL service to the other available hosts, right? So um, it detects that the node due to the health checks uh, that is con constantly doing, right? It not only receives health checks, but it should um, constantly be checking for uh, the node health. Once it detects that that node went down, just switches the traffic to the healthy node. Another problem that is um, quite difficult to solve is, the, uh, is that today uh, pretty much all the uh, applications that we have can be scaled to hundreds of nodes very easily. Let's say that you are working for a startup that's a startup uh, gaining, is gaining momentum and some uh, very famous person uh, tweets that your startup is really cool. You're going to start having uh, to scale up uh, your application horizontally like tenfold, twentyfold. Um, the workload required for um, controlling that uh, simply can be uh, daunting if you are planning to do it yourself. Uh, so your service discovery solutions should be able to scale with you, right? And then there's network efficiency. Um, all of this network traffic going from node to node um, can, be, uh, can take a, a hit uh, to the network. 
So you have to be aware of bandwidth limits and your communication protocols uh, really need to minimize uh, network traffic uh, to be as efficient as possible. Uh, then there is what happens when your servers fail. Um, your application should be able to survive uh, one failure and then another failure. Um, that's when self-healing algorithms comes in, right? And then you have data consistency which is very important in uh, pretty much everything that we are doing. Uh, let's say that you want to uh, recover um, one address to connect to uh, Cassandra, right? So uh, a Cassandra cluster. So you ask for uh, that address to one console server and you ask, um, and then another uh, client asks the same thing to another console server. You have to be able to have the same response from all of your service discovery servers uh, to the same query. This is very important. This is actually where console comes in. Console allows you to do all of that. Uh, it has a very cool health check uh, system. So, um, the first thing that you have to have in mind is that you can run any arbitrary command in your node uh, using a script. This script uh, will return an exit status. If successful, everything is cool. If not, uh, this, uh, the um, health check agent will report that to the console cluster. Um, second part. If you want to use HTTP to poke a, services that, a service that you have running in that server, that's perfect too. And, um, and last one, if your um, service can uh, proactively report to console um, with a status over a time to leave um, and store it in the key value uh, storage that console has. So console can have, uh, can check this uh, value and if it doesn't live up to the time to leave then uh, basically it will say hey this node is having uh, problems. Console has two interfaces to work with. Uh, one is via HTTP uh, and the other one is just querying uh, DNS. Uh, of course, DNS is much uh, lighter than HTTP, but it's not as flexible as the API. Um, consensus is very important. Uh, due to the infamous CAP theorem, the consistency, availability, and partitioning uh, issue, you can, you can have the three of them at the same time. You can only choose two. So um, since console needs to be um, consistent, really consistent, and uh, since it is very distributed, so it is very partitioned, um, it uses a consensus algorithm to um, understand which node uh, has failed, which service has failed, and then reroute the traffic. Uh, the consensus protocol is based on Raft, is not exactly raft. Um, raft is, of course, uh, is, is completely outside of this uh, talk, but you can check it out. It's, uh, it's very interesting. Um, a very quick overview on how this works. Uh, the quorum uh, for um, taking a decision on which, um, if, if a node is down or not, uh, it's um, done by this simple formula, which is n over 2 plus 1. This means that the latest, that the uh, minimum console cluster that you can have is three console nodes. Uh, if one fails, the other two can say, hey, there's a quorum uh, to agree that the third, no, uh, the third uh, server, that the third uh, cluster server has failed. So. Um, uh, we need to uh, alert the operator, right? 
and having three or five uh, is the best way. Why? Simply because um, if you have three, if one fails, the other, you can, the other two can talk to each other. If you have five and two fail, then uh, the other three can talk to each other and you will still be abiding to the rule that uh, of n over two plus one. This is actually what console creators recommend to have three or five uh, uh, console cluster deployment. Um, then you have the problem of membership of the, uh, actually how uh, console will uh, detect services to, to provide them and um, manage memberships in, um, in order to provide the information of the clients. Service discovery um, uses this membership uh, and, and has um, two different pools, which is the LAN pool and one pool. The LAN pool, uh, the, loc uh, the local area network, is um, uh, console helps you by discovering uh, services uh, which allows you to reduce a lot of the configuration that you have to use. It uses a gossip protocol, right? Um, the pool contains all members of the data center, uh, clients and servers. Oh, sorry. <laughs> when? Um, and the one pool um, is unique. Why? Because since you can use console to deploy uh, to do service discovery across multi data centers, uh, the one pool is um, provides information um, of uh, the services uh, regardless of the data center. You know that uh, service A is service A and service B is service B and, and just that. Um, another very cool feature is that failure detection uh, allows console to um, handle losses co of connectivity. Uh, so you can be sure that um, you will not have crazy packages uh, being lost in the network. Um, I'm having little time, right? Uh, how much time do I have? Three minutes? Wow. Uh, I have a very brief example to show you guys. Let's see if I can do it real quick. Let's say that uh, we have a lattice deployment and a console deployment, and we have a MySQL stack uh, with two master masters, right? Um, then um, console uh, uh, agents talks to console servers uh, to provide health check information. Let's say that uh, from your lattice deployment, for your application requires to connect to MySQL, uh, I will query console uh, via HTTP or DNS uh, then um, console will return uh, the address that I need to connect in order uh, to use MySQL. And what happens when uh, this one of the server fails? I simply what uh, console will do is to uh, understand that this server is failing and start rerouting the traffic from the um, uh, bad MySQL server to the Good MySQL server. Uh, wow, that was quick. Um, so uh, coming up real soon, we will have a post, a blog post on Altor's blog with all of this, and we will provide a demo on how to do this, uh, a, a video um, doing this. So uh, just stay tuned, check it out. And I guess that we didn't, we don't have an, even time for uh, questions. But if you have one, and real quick, I maybe I can take it. No questions. That was real. That's really bad or really good. It depends on your look. Okay. All right. So it thinks that <laughs> this is it. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, see you later. See you next year. <laughs>